Markov's inequality is really simple. Let's understand it through this example. Suppose you have six people. You are told that they have on average three apples. In other words, they have a total of 18 apples among the six of them. Now consider this question. What fraction of people can have six or more apples? For example, everyone can't have six or more apples because if they did, the mean would not be three apples. It would be at least six. If five people had six or more apples, then there would be at least six times five or 30 apples. But we know there are only 18. So it can't also be that five of them have six or more apples. The issue is that there's a limited number of apples and too many people can't have six or more apples. It turns out that the maximum number of people that can have six or more apples is three. In this case, three of them will have six apples each and the remaining three will have zero apples. So that's half of all people that could have six or more apples. A similar question, how many people can have nine or more apples? You can work it out and you'll see that if two people have nine apples, the remaining four people must have zero. And so at most two people, or one third of people, can have nine or more apples. This is the essence of Markov's inequality. It is an inequality about large outliers. There is a constraint on the fraction of large outliers because of the mean. We write this in the following way. The probability that a random variable x takes a value more than t times its mean is at most 1 over t. In the above examples, we saw 6, which is 2 times the mean, and 9, which is 3 times the mean. t can also be any real number that is at least 1. Note that Markov's inequality only works when the random variable is limited to positive values. Otherwise, some large negative values can balance out any large positive values.